Now that you successfully recall the definitions of assets and bases, it's time for us to embark on this journey and first hit the first level of learning how to find the pH of strong assets or strong bases. But first, what is pH? Now, you probably have heard pH using as a way to measure the strength of an acid. Let's say a strong acid has pH 1 or 2, a weak or rather a strong base has pH of 13 or 14. But in reality, pH is just a value because P is minus log 10 minus log. And therefore, pH is minus log H plus. H plus do some simple manipulation, 10 power minus pH. Likewise, there's actually something called the POH, where it's minus log OH minus, OH minus, again, sin manipulation minus POH. All right. Now, one thing to note is that because it's just a mathematical value, it actually measures the total concentration of H plus or OH minus in a solution. And because of that, we cannot actually use this to indicate or to really compare the strength of an acid or base. For example, I can have a very concentrated solution of ethylene acid, a weak acid, and have it having the same pH as a solution of a very diluted, let's say, nitric acid. Even though both have the same pH, we know that ethylene acid is a weak acid because it dissociates partially in water. On the other hand, we know that nitric acid is a strong acid because it fully dissociates in water. All right? So really, the actual way to measure or to really figure out whether an acid uh, is strong or not is not just with the pH of pH, it can also look at the degree of dissociation and many other factors as well. All right? But of course, you can use use pH and pOH if we ensure that the two acids we are comparing, two bases we are comparing, each have the same concentration. All right? So, we talk about H+, plus, we talk about OH-, minus. it's inevitable that we talk about water, all right? And that is where we bring in the ionic product of water, KW. And if you look at the letter K, where you first encounter it, equilibrium. And this is the equilibrium we're talking about, right? The auto-ionization of water should be familiar, or you guys have heard about it before, right? So, from here, we can create the equilibrium constant equation, Kc equals OH minus H plus over H2O, put on top, reactants at the bottom. And the idea is, first of all, we know that concentration of H2O is 55.6 mole per dm cube. All right. And if you look at, or if you actually have some sort of background knowledge, you know that the concentrations the extent of this ionization is very low, making the concentration of H plus and OH minus to be very, very insignificant as well. Because of that, the concentration of H2O would remain relatively constant at this value as well. Because of that, we can just simply multiply 55.6 on the left and the right, or basically multiply the concentration of water. And then combining the left hand side, we then have Kw. And this equation is the ionic product of water, where we have the product between the two ions, hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion. Okay. Then how do we involve pH and pOH? Well, P is minus log. We just apply minus log on both sides, we get pKw, pOH plus pH. All right. And you notice that Kw forms from Kc times H, times concentration of H2O. And well, the properties of Kc would then be related and also applied to Kw as well. For example, temperature. All right, so temperature affects Kw and pretty much nothing else. All right? And it shouldn't be a surprise to you considering that we're looking at equilibrium. And temperature is one of the factors that could change the position of equilibrium and have different values for the concentration. Which then brings me to this next part, all right? You probably have heard this idea of, all right, pH of water is seven, all right? And thereby, concentration, as we have learned, of hydrogen ion in water is 10 power minus seven, mole per dm cube, right? So capital M as mole per dm cube, please don't use that in the exam, all right? This is just for us and ease of presenting. And you probably know that that's definitely not true, right? Because I can have a temperature that's higher or lower, and that will shift the position of equilibrium based on the Le Chatelier's principle, and 
the concentration of H plus wouldn't be 10 power minus 7. And as you can see from this table on, this table here, it does change. All right, so first thing to take note of is pH of H2O is 7 only at our favorite temperature, room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. All right, thereby making Kw a very nice number, 10 power minus 14, or 1 times 10 power minus 14. All right, you notice as the temperature decreases, the concentration of H plus decreases. And from here, you can probably tell that, well, this equilibrium, this forward reaction is actually endothermic. All right, you decrease temperature, equilibrium favors, the backwards reaction is favored, so endothermic reaction. And likewise, you increase temperature to 60, you notice that pH is decreasing, concentration of H plus is increasing. Okay, but even with this variation in pH as the temperature varies, water is still neutral. Why? Because H plus, concentration of H plus is the same as concentration of OH minus. It's just that the concentration, the value of each concentration of H plus and concentration of OH minus can change. But no matter how much they change, they are still equal. Therefore, water is still neutral. So, I only product of water, and mainly the question we're seeing, we be dealing with is usually in the 25 degrees Celsius. All right, if it's not stated, you can assume it to be 25 degrees Celsius. And Kw is given, so from here, for 25, for 25 degrees Celsius, so from here you can calculate the pH, which is 10 power minus 7. All right, pH is 7, pOH is 7, concentration of H plus, concentration of OH minus, they are both 10 power minus 7. But if there's any other temperature that they want you to do, as you basically create questions in, they will be giving you sufficient information. All right, so not to worry about that. And for KW, well, don't forget it too soon because we're going to look at it again in level two. But I need to understand this part first because when we're going to calculate pH or pOH of acid, strong acids and bases, we might sometimes need to involve this. Okay, so a summary of formulas that we have learned, pH and pOH, along with the two KW equations, the ionic product, and then applying the P on it, all right? So with this, we can now learn and figure out how to find pH of acids and bases in the next video, all right? Catch you guys then.